of her work started from the act of observation. She'll note down little incidents that occurred to her or uh, sightings. I think she's like most writers, they have to write. I mean, if they've got it in them, they have to do it, and whether you're published or not. She was writing about the things that she knew and saw around her. I think it's admirable that Pym uh, persisted for so long, and I think it's one of the markers that she was a born writer. I first came to Barbara Pym on the occasion of the famous Times Literary Supplement article in 1977, when she was the only living author named by two different people as most underrated. Thank goodness the publishers woke up. To love that work, you have to take a step forward doesn't throw itself into your face. It is extremely well written, it's very tautly written. There's nothing in it that you could leave out. Her use of humor, which is impossible to extract from the page, it is so beautifully knit into the whole paragraph. She's such a genius of style that way. She treats whole uh, ranges of characters with great sympathy, insight and, and humour. She is writing about big ideas and those ideas are the same when she was writing as they are now. And there is something so completely English about this. You feel as though she is steeped in the country where she grew up. There were only about three years that she had of life from the time that she was resurrected, as it were, until she died. And that was a very busy time for her. She must have loved it. She'd want to be remembered for her best novels. People who read, who love language, who recognize good writing, I think there is a readership out there for Barbara Pym.